Our song selection for today will be Deep River. of the UCI. First Peter chapter 4 verses 7 through 11. But the end of all things is at hand. 
Be you therefore sober, and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent love among yourselves, for love shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of Elohim. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of Elohim. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which Elohim gives that Elohim in all things may be glorified through Yahshua the Mashiach, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 through chapter 5 and verse 4. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of Elohim, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be you kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as Elohim for Yahshua's sake has forgiven you. Be you therefore followers of Elohim, as their children, and walk in love, as the Mashiach also have loved us, and has given himself for us an offering and sacrifice to Elohim for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather given of thanks. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verses 1 and 2. Keep your foot when you go to the house of Elohim, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools for they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash with your mouth, and let not your heart be hasty to utter anything before Elohim. For Elohim is in heaven, and you upon earth, therefore let your words be few. Exodus chapter 23, verses 20 and 21. Behold, I send an angel before you, to keep you in the way, and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him, and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. Revelations chapter 3, verses 20 through 22. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I have also overcame and am sat down with my father in his throne. He that has an ear... Let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. All right. Now, when we consider the plight of this so-called African-American, we must not separate it from the words of the covenant between the children of Israel and Yah. We were given instructions on how to govern ourselves. If we refuse to obey his commandments, then perpetual servitude will consume us and we will be removed from our land to serve others in their land. This system of bondage is a direct result of Israel's transgression against our Elohim. We're going to begin today's sermon in 1 Peter chapter 2. And we're going to read verses 13 through 25. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verses 13 through 25. And today's sermon is entitled, The System of Bondage That Sin Built. The System of Bondage that sin built. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 13. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Adonai's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers. Now, we have to consider that some of these things that we were uh, uh, given um, coming uh, not... Uh, understanding where we were and understanding what that punishment was, this doctrine then, our own legacy, was given back to us in a way for us to be ruled over rigorously. So these things were then pushed amongst uh, uh, the slave masters so that um, they could produce more obedient servants. So there was a way in which we learn the gospel again out of the same book, but things were taught to us in a different way 
so that we would uh, uh, accept the authority of the slave master and the system that he set up. Go ahead. And for the praise of them that do well. Verse 15. For so is the will of Elohim, that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of Elohim. Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear Elohim. Honor the king. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the froward. So then this gave uh, the rulers over the slaves the, the opportunity to still be uh, very rigorous, to still be uh, 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 treat them in an evil way. And then a good Christian slave was to uh, 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 still serve in a certain way. This is the way in which this doctrine was uh, uh, given to us, and it caused a lot of our people to end up revolting and not wanting to deal with any gospel whatsoever. Not for the sake of the gospel, but for the way in which it was delivered unto us, because it was delivered unto us for the purpose of servitude. This is how the, the, the rulership then was transformed. It went from um, a thing of one level of servitude to then using religion as the way for us to be in this next level of servitude. Go ahead. Verse 19. For this is thankworthy, if a man for conscience toward Elohim endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it if, when you be buffeted for your faults, you shall take it patiently? But if, when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with Elohim. Right, and these things are true. But then those things taken out of context um, to push and and uh, uh, basically put a stamp of, of approval on the methods uh, used in slavery is something altogether different. Go ahead. For even hereunto were you called, because the Mashiach also suffered for us, leaving us an example. That, we, that you should follow his steps. Right, you should follow, not other people. You should follow in those steps of being uh, oppressed and still uh, speak not back uh, those things. Those things were not put upon other people. Those things were expected of you as being the, the, the uh, 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 children of slaves. Go ahead. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who? When he was rivaled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live on to righteousness, by whose stripes you are healed. For you are as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. All right, let's go to... Um, um... Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians or Ephesus? No, it should be Ephesians, I'm sure. Okay. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 5. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of your heart, as unto the Mashiach. So then it was pushed to us that we should be servants to the level of, of accepting these people just as you would accept uh, our Christ. So then this was a, a, a whole nother level of servitude that was expected of us. And this, this, this book, Our Legacy, was then used to uh, 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 further subjugate us using uh, this so-called thing of religion. But we know that that's not what this book is. But how this book is used and what it is is something altogether different. 
Go ahead. Not with eye service, as men pleasers, but as servants of the Mashiach, doing the will of Elohim from the heart, with good will doing service, as to the Adonai, and not to men. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man does, the same shall he receive of the Adonai, whether he be bond or free. And you masters, do the same things unto them, forbearing threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is their respect of persons with him. Now, the, the interesting thing about when it came to uh, um, 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 parts that you would find there, of course, there was a separation between uh, the slave master and the brutal treatment of the slave uh, because he had people to do that. He himself didn't have to do that. He had people in place to do uh, uh, all the whipping, the beatings, and the making sure that the work uh, was completed uh, uh, on time. Um, uh, read this um, next note here, bro. Taken from the Black Chronicle newspaper dated March 7th, 1857. On March 6th, Frederick Douglass overwhelmed a large crowd here last night with a brilliant address on the evils of slavery and the colonization movement. His tall, powerful frame ramrod straight, his dark eyes flashing, and famed, the famed black orator brought tears from the audience as he eloquently recounted the cruelty he experienced as a Maryland slave. And moments later, listeners burst into laughter at his description of the way he and his companions outwitted their masters. To a man, the audience rose and cheered when he ridiculed the important clergy the important clergymen in the North and South who defended slavery with God's word. Right. So understand this. This was then. Th this is taken from uh, the Black Chronicle newspaper in 1857, and they were using the 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 word of God to justify slavery. Go ahead. Could that be the same word he asked as the one which taught the yoke of the bondsman and let the oppressed go free? Right. So then he's asking because he knows enough about the word. Do understand that there were uh, uh, situations where we were not supposed to have um, the ability to read or write. So then those people would not have an opportunity to go back on certain things. Being that this person had, uh, um, of course, we know Frederick Douglass being, you know, educated he was able to uh, read those things for himself and, uh, for himself and uh, um, know where to go and what to say to combat the things that were um, being uh, 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 said there. Um, it was actually outlawed for uh, our people at that time to be able to write um, because to have the right to travel, you needed traveling papers. Well, if you could write the traveling papers yourself, then you would be um, um, accused of forgery. So you weren't supposed to write. Um, now, we have to understand that these fundamental principles were taught to whites as well as blacks. So many whites accepted their teachings, even though this may not have been their original thought process. Their spiritual leader was someone that they trusted. So many people were uh, persuaded that this was a correct way to be because after all, this did come from uh, the pastor. Now, um, while many blacks say that this old manner of thinking needs to be done away with, we still operate in many other erroneously taught doctrines and orders. While in Savannah, Georgia on vacation, me and my family went on several tours of historic Savannah and of the oldest standing Baptist church, uh, Baptist congregation in America the first African Baptist church. The first black churches were started in the balcony of white churches. To be excused, the blacks would have to put one finger in the air and would have to be nodded out to leave. Now the interesting thing is we were just talking about this about three, four weeks ago. Of course, we were playing. Um, um, when somebody walked out, you know, we used to see it all the time in church, you know, and we put the hand up, nobody knew what the hell we were doing. You know, saying? so we were joking not too long ago about it. And we were just holding our hand up, walking out. And then we say, you know what, man? I wonder what the hell does that mean? Three weeks later, we go down listening to this person 
and then he starts going through what that is. So consider that. That means that to this day, black people still hold up one finger as they leave the room during church service, which is how a slave exited the sanctuary during that time. So the very people who are who will claim that you are walking in bondage still leave the room like a slave on Sunday morning. Yeah, rattle that one around for a little minute. Right. Let's go to uh, uh, Genesis chapter 15. See, sometimes Yahweh puts a question inside your spirit and then turns around and answers that question before you even have an opportunity to ask it. Because that's not something that we ask. We was just sitting there as it came out, and then we all turn around and look at each other because we know we were just talking about it. Genesis chapter 15, and we're going to read verses 1 through 18. After these things, the word of Yahweh came on to Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Adnan Elohim, what will you give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus? And Abram said, Behold, to me you have given no seed, and, lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And, behold, the word of Yahweh came unto him, saying, this shall, not be your, this shall not be your heir, but he that shall come forth out of your own bowels shall be your heir. And he brought him forth abroad, and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars, if you be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall your seed be. And he believed in Yahweh, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Right. Believing in Yahweh was, was uh, uh, then accounted as righteousness. And we have to get right down to, when it comes down to certain things, why we don't react or why we don't operate uh, the way that uh, uh, we're supposed to is because there's some unbelief there. Now, we won't admit that. Remember, during the time of the Mashiach, they said, uh, 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 help you my unbelief. So we won't consider that it's unbelief that's causing us not to do certain things. We got a problem with this or we got a question with that. Right. That's unbelief. He believed, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Go ahead. Verse 7. And he said unto him, I am Yahweh that brought you out of Ur of the Chaldees to give you this land to inherit it. And he said, Adonai Elohim, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me an heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took on to him all these, and divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one against another. But the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. And, lo, an horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that your seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation, whom they shall serve, will I judge. And afterward shall they come out with great substance. And you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again, for the lawlessness of the Amorites is not yet full. Consider that the lawlessness of the Amorites is not yet full. So Yahweh will allow some things to go on. And a lot of times people believe that Yahweh is okay with it because he hasn't intervened. And he's just letting them go ahead and finish it out. Like, ain't, no, ain't no need of you stopping there. Go ahead and pour it all the rest of the night. Because you're going to the same lake of fire. So you might wear well dance double time. They don't need to stop in that. Go ahead. And it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. In the same day Yahweh made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto your seed have I given this land. 
from the river of Egypt onto the great river, the river Euphrates. And what this is, this is that, um, this is the reason why you have people pretending to be the true children of Israel, why they want to make the claim um, to be the ancient Israelites. Um, this is all about a land grab. You have to consider how much land is in this part from uh, 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 the river of Egypt to uh, the river Euphrates. That is a large part of land. And you find there's a constant war thing going on um, amongst the people who call themselves uh, uh, the Israelis. And it's a constant taking of land. And because they control the media here, a lot of things are not reported, but you have various people start to speaking out about why are you constantly taking their land? You, you, you have enough of where you are. Why are you constantly doing it? Um, but this is what this is all about. Um, and the powers that be who put them there, America and Great Britain, they are then using these very uh, uh, concepts to get more and more land uh, uh, in that Middle East. Uh, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy 28, and let's read verses 63 through 68. Verse 63. And it shall come to pass that as Yahweh rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you, so Yahweh will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught. And you shall be plucked from off the land whether you go to possess it. And Yahweh shall scatter you among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. Mm -hmm. And there you shall serve other gods, which neither you nor your fathers have known, even wood and stone. And among these nations shall you find no ease, neither shall the sole of your foot have rest. But Yahweh shall give you there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. And your life shall, br and your life shall hang in doubt before you, and you shall fare day and night and shall have non-assurance of your life. In the morning you shall say, Would Elohim it were even? And at even you shall say, Would Elohim it were morning? For the fear of your heart wherewith you shall fear, and for the sight of your eyes which you shall see. And Yahweh shall bring you into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto you, you shall see it no more again. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. Now what we have to um, uh, consider when it starts talking about sending us into Egypt again with ships, uh, we understand that Egypt is bondage and you can read in other places where it says that same thing. Um, while we were on vacation um, watching um, um, in this um, uh, Savannah port, uh, watching all of these cargo ships coming in and out, and I mean these ships were I mean, humongous ships. There is an enormous amount of economic wealth coming in and out of that city as you uh, just go about doing your thing. You don't really uh, uh, consider how much money is coming in. You know, um, um, looking at the news and you hear all of the things that they're supposed to be going back and forth about the tariffs and uh, going, you know, with the Chinese and all of these things. Um, listening to that, I ended up hearing them say, you know, in the Chinese um, uh, shipping part, Costco, not Costco, Costco, C-O-S-C-O. -C -O. And as I, I, I'm looking at that, the huge ship says Costco comes right into the port. And I mean, it is loaded down with stuff. And, you know, we wouldn't even consider a small town like Savannah, you know, that important when it comes down to money. But uh, uh, Savannah is the fourth largest port in the United States. There are two in L.A., one in New York. The, fir the fourth is Savannah. So you have to consider. Then Yahweh ends up saying the same way you came in here is the same way you're going to leave out. So uh, uh, it might be a reason that Yahweh ends up wanting us to understand certain things uh, because 
uh, uh, an entire, a, a gross amount of our people came in through uh, uh, this same way. Um, another thing that we um, end up encountering was those um, uh, slave holding rooms. Um, and you find them right off the river. You, you uh, see the boats coming in and right outside of that were these huge brick rooms. Um, of course, they've taken the bars and things off of them, um, but this was right where um, um, they were selling the slaves coming right off of that water. And when you back up a little bit, you can see that the shops that are on the riverfront was the same thing. You can see the same setup where they just kind of uh, 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 built some things around it and turned it into a store. But it was a store, all right. It was a store to sell the children of Israel. And it was made exactly like that. You can see the, the, the cobblestones, all of the rocks that were basically in the ships to give them weight so that they wouldn't turn over in the seas. When they came back, they had to unload those rocks and they were switching things back and forth so that the weight would stay the same even when they unload it. So once you unload all of those uh, 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 slaves, now you got an empty ship. Empty ship gonna get tore up on the sea. Then you gotta put the rocks back in. So then they have to have these rocks in all of these places that they're gonna constantly go so that they can maintain the same uh, 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 amount of weight. Um, uh, when we consider what is written, when it says, uh, I'm going to bring you into Egypt again, we have to consider all of the symbols of Egypt and how those very symbols are here. Uh, one of those um, uh, phallic symbols I took a picture of was in a, um, 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 a little shopping center right off of Peachtree Industrial. And um, if you understand what the phallic symbol is, you, you understand that this one phallic symbol has four circular things at the bottom on each side. I got you in here. So, so, so um, it's, it's, it's made for you from whatever angle you're at to see the phallic symbol and the circular part up under it because that was a symbol of you know, your reproductive part is a symbol of your power. So what that, what, what, what was that supposed to mean? White power. And we don't understand what that means and we see them everywhere. You have to ask yourself, why do you go to cemeteries and you see the same thing? You go to the Confederate burial places, you see all these phallic symbols. Why do they have that? That's a symbol of white power. And they're everywhere. They're all over, why would um, this very thing be in uh, Washington, D.C. Um, understanding the power that Egypt had and the, the, the length of the time that it was able to rule, you have people wanting to mimic um, that um, um, very thing. Um, Brother Reed on um, 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 pick 12, this note that we um, uh, got out of a study Bible bring you into Egypt. This verse seems especially to point to an event which took place subsequently to the destruction of Jerusalem by Titus and the desolation made by Hadrian. Right, Hadrian. Hadrian. Now, Pardon. understand, now this isn't a study Bible. This is why I tell people, you know, when they spend all of these monies to, to, to get all of these books that have certain names in them, but they don't have any notes whatsoever. So when you get down to this, the, the, these are notes that's in the study Bible. Now, I'm not saying all of the notes are, are, are right. You have to go over some of them. But, but understand, they are then automatically at this point giving you some notes that, that goes with this particular event. This verse seems to especially point out an event which took place subsequently to the destruction of Jerusalem by Titus, 70 AD. Now, we, we can pinpoint what they're talking about and the desolation made by Hadrian. Go ahead. Numbers of the captives were sent by sea into Egypt, as well as into other countries, and sold for slaves at a vile price. So, at the destruction, you know, there's some things that you have to, 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 to take and leave with, with some of the notes, but you have to consider, they are letting you know at the destruction of Israel, the Israelites were sold to slaves. 
What Jew you know that was sold to a slave? They don't even claim that one. See, you can't talk about this as being what took place in Egypt because they're automatically now talking about a great deal of time later that this has happened in 70 AD. We can pinpoint when Titus came into Jerusalem and destroyed the city. We know when this happened. See? So trying to tell me that, you know, you was a slave during the time of Moses, that's not going to fit. You got to show me your recent slavery after Christ. They can't show you that. See, this is why you want to study Bible instead of paying a whole bunch of money to get something that's just got some names in it. Because, see, this is going to pinpoint some things. And it ain't like you got to look for it. Keep going. And for the meanest offices. And many thousands were left to perish from want, for the multitude was so great that purchasers could not be found for them all at any price. Right. Uh, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 43. See, there's some things that you can go past that's going to uh, 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 prove to you who you are. And I know, you know, some people got upset when I had said, you know, hey, I know what the names are. So when I'm reading them, I put the names in. I'd rather have the notes than the name. What's more important, the note or the name? I know the name. I don't need you to keep telling me the name over and over. That's like them people that keep fussing about, is his name Yahweh? Is it Yahuwah? Is it this? Man, how many times are we going to go over the same thing? How about let's do what, what it takes to attain salvation? Because you, you can know the name and still walk in evil, and it ain't going to do you no good. You just know the name while you're getting thrown in the fire. Congratulations. Yahweh! Congratulations. What's that going to do for you? Jeremiah chapter 43, and let's start that at verse 1. And it came to pass that when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking unto all the people, all the words of Yahweh their Elohim, for which Yahweh their Elohim had sent him to them, even all these words, then spake Azariah, the son of Hosea, and Yohanan, the son of Kariah, and all the proud men sang unto Jeremiah. All the proud men. Go ahead. You speaketh falsely. Mm -hmm. Yahweh our Elohim hath not sent you to say, go not into Egypt to sojourn there. Right. See, th these are the proud men, and they, they will not be humble. They will not be uh, 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 instructed to uh, uh, deal with uh, captivity or deal with the punishment. They're too proud to deal with that. And being too proud to deal with punishment only bring forth more punishment. Go ahead. But Baruch, the son of Neriah, said it you on against us, for to deliver us into the hand of the Chaldeans, that they might put us to death and carry us away captives into Babylon. So Yohanan, the son of Kariah, and all the captains of the forces and all the people obeyed not the voice of Yahweh to dwell in the land of Yehuda. Now, what you have to understand and, and, and consider what's happening is these are... Israelites trying to convince other Israelites. See, we have this thing in our head that, you know, the thing is going to go this one way. We have constructed this, uh, 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 this battle in our head, and it does not include us going against each other. But we are gravely mistaken. These are Israelites trying to mislead other Israelites. You need to get that through your head because some of these people have envisioned that, oh, it's going to be us against the Gentiles. Man, the Gentiles is like, no, we're going to go with y'all. We, we understand. But what's wrong with your other people over there? Look, man, I don't know what's wrong with them. See, we got to get this and, and, and understand some of the biggest conflicts that we've had. They were with one another. You got other part of us that's sitting there talking about trying to convince us to go against Moshe. Oh, you done made yourself this over us. You done made, those are Israelites. Go ahead. Verse 5. But Yohanan the son of Kira, 
And all the captains of the forces took all the remnant of Yehuda that were returned from all nations where they had been driven to dwell in the land of Yehuda, even men and women and children and the king's daughters and every person that Nebuzar Adon, the captain of the guard, had left with Gedaliah, the son of Haakam, the son of Shaphan, and Yermiah the prophet, and Baruch, the son of Neriah. So they came into the land of Egypt, for they obeyed not the voice of Yahweh. Thus came they even to Taphanes. Then came the word of Yahweh unto Yermiah and Taphanes, saying, Take great stones in your hand, and hide them in the clay, in the bricklin, which is at the entry of Pharaoh's house in Taphanes, in the sight of the men of Yehuda, And say unto them, Thus said Yahweh of hosts, the El of Israel, Behold, I will send and take Nebuchadrezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will set his throne upon these stones that I have hid, and he shall spread his royal pavilion over them. And when he comes, he shall smite the land of Egypt, and deliver such as are for death to death, and such as are for captivity to captivity, and such are as for the sword to the sword. And I will kindle a fire in the houses of the gods of Egypt, and he shall burn them, and carry them away captive, and carry them away captives, and he shall array himself with the land of Egypt, as a shepherd puts on his garment, he shall go forth from thence in peace. He shall break also the images of Beth Shemesh, that is in the land of Egypt, and the houses of the gods of the Egyptians shall he burn with fire. Right, so you're going to go somewhere to seek refuge, and Yahweh is just going to punish the people who you seek to go uh, 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 to seek refuge with, thinking that you're going to uh, go around dealing with the things of Yahweh. You're just going to bring them people problems too. Consider, uh, 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 who is it, Yona? He going one way. Everybody on the boat got problem. Them people ain't doing nothing. They just end up on the boat with him. Man, you, 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 you serving the Yahweh, man. We, what you, what you, we understand why we're doing foulness. But why are you doing foulness? They weren't punished for their foulness or anything they had done. They was punished because... He was there. So you're going to take off running, and you end up bringing hell to those people. They ain't doing that. But Yahweh expects something totally different from the children of Israel. Go ahead. Verse 44, chapter 44, and verse 1. The word that came to Yeremiah concerning all the Yehudis which dwell in the land of Egypt, which dwell at Migdal, and at Taphanes, and at Naph, and in the country of Pathros, saying, Thus said the Yahweh of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, You have seen all the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem and upon all the cities of Yehuda, and, behold, this day they are a desolation, and no man dwells therein, because of their wickedness which they have committed to provoke mm -hmm. me to anger, and in that they went to burn incense and to serve other gods, whom they knew not, neither they, you, nor your fathers. Right. So... Uh, there's no question as to why we have suffered those things because we have accepted, just like we do today, these so-called holidays, um, which are uh, the worship of other gods. And Yahweh allows it to go on to a certain point, and then he comes through and punishes everything in the midst. But people have an opportunity to, to reason with one another to back up from that. But when you have that pride, we don't back up until everything starts to get taken from us. And by that time, it's too late. Go ahead. Verse 4. Howbeit, I sent unto you all my servants the prophets, rising early and sending them, saying, Oh, do not these abominable things that I hate. Mm -hmm. But they hearken not, nor incline their ear to turn from their wickedness, to burn no incense unto other gods. Wherefore my fury and my anger was poured, out, poured forth and was kindled in the cities of Yehuda and in the streets of Jerusalem. And they are wasted and desolate as at this day. Right. But what they saw was some natural reason as to why they were having so many issues 
around their houses, around their cities, all of these problems near them. They don't see the spiritual punishment that because they have walked away from Yahweh. Go ahead. Therefore now, thus saith Yahweh, the El of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, wherefore commit you this great evil against your souls? to cut off from you man and woman, child and suckling, out of Yehuda, to leave you none to remain, in that you provoke me unto wrath with the works of your hands, burning incense unto other gods in the land of Egypt, whether you be gone to dwell, that you might cut yourselves off, and that you might be a curse and a reproach among all the nations of the earth. Have you forgotten the wickedness of your fathers and the wickedness of the kings of Yehuda? and the wickedness of their wives, and your own wickedness, and the wickedness of your wives, which they have committed in the land of Yehuda and in the streets of Jerusalem? They are not humbled even unto this day, neither have they feared, nor walked in my law, nor in my statutes, that I set before you and before your fathers. Therefore thus said the Yahweh of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, Behold, I will set my face against you for evil, and to cut off all Yehuda, and I will take the rem and I will take the remnant of Yehuda that have set their faces to go into the land of Egypt to sojourn there, and they shall all be consumed and fall in the land of Egypt. They shall even be consumed by the sword and by the famine. They shall die from the least even to the greatest by the sword and by the famine. They shall be an ex execration and an astonishment, and a curse, and a reproach. Right. So then the ones who run away from the punishment get a, a, a deeper punishment than the ones who humbly accept the punishment for their doings. Consider our people who uh, uh, left America to go to Liberia and all of those places. They are in straight hell. In that same Black Chronicle uh, 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 newspaper, there was an uh, um, another part of that uh, article given by Frederick Douglass where um, uh, he said it was the uh, uh, former masters that were telling them, that were convincing them that maybe y'all should go back to, to, to Africa. He said this is going to hurt our cause more than it would help. Now, he didn't have all of the reasons why, but he in no way agreed with you know, going somewhere else to then fight for freedom. He said, we're just going to be starting over wherever we go. Go ahead. Verse 13. For I will punish them that dwell in the land of Egypt, <laughs> as I have punished Jerusalem by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence, so that none of the remnant of Yehuda, which are gone into the land of Egypt to sojourn there, shall escape or remain, that they should return into the land of Yehuda to the which they have a desire to return to dwell there. For none shall return, but such as shall escape. Right. So the ones who don't accept it and go somewhere else, they're going to lose the opportunity to return. Go ahead. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burnt incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by, a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, in Pathros, answered Yermiah, saying, as for the word that you have spoken unto us in the name of Yahweh, we will not hearken unto you. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goes forth out of our own mouth, to burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto her, as we have done, we and our fathers, our kings and our princes, in the cities of Yehuda and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then had we plenty of victuals, and were well and saw no evil. So now it has gotten into our mindset that we were better off when we served the heathen gods. And if you, if, if, if it get down to the point, a lot of us will, uh, 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 this is how we get convinced to step away from the word. Yahweh starts humbling us. He starts trying to straighten us out. People say, oh no, wait a minute now. I had more stuff when I served loose. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going through all these problems now. I don't know. Wait a minute. Now, I don't know. I didn't want, I just want everything to be smooth and, and, and life to go good. I don't, I don't want to go through no problem now. I need to go back to church on Sunday. Right. Because at that point, Yahweh left you alone. Because you wasn't there one of his children. 
You don't go to a park and start disciplining other people's kids. You see a bunch of rowdy kids, the first thing you do when you go in there and them kids doing all kind of stuff, you go find yours. Which one of my children, which one of y'all busted one? You start dealing with you. You don't go and get somebody else's kids and start whooping them. Them ain't your kids. Well, y'all will operate the same way. Look at these little bad children. Where Israel? What children Israel at? Right there. Come here. Y'all come here. Yeah, but y'all, what about them? They were setting fires and, and worshiping other gods. Yeah, but them Lucifer kids ain't got nothing to do with me. Come here. You come here. I'm going to whoop you. And we don't understand that that is the blessing. We turn around and have a problem. Why they ain't get no whooping? Them Lucifer's kids, he want them to do that. Go ahead. Jeremiah chapter 44 and verse 18. But since we left off to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour our drink offerings onto her, we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. And when we burnt incense to the queen of heaven and poured out drink offerings onto her, did we make her cakes to worship her and pour out drink offerings onto her without our men? Now, consider, what, what did the uh, 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 adversary say? Um, when he came against Yahshua. If you bow down and worship me, I will give you all these things. For it is given unto me, and I give it to, to whomsoever I will. So, uh, uh, um, Hillel, Lucifer, has the power to bless. So there's a whole lot of people that believe that they, because we call any kind of monetary thing a blessing. Okay? That's our first problem. So, we then receive some things, and we think it must come from the Most High. He says right in the beginning, if you bow down, worship me, I'll give you some stuff. We don't consider that. So now our people are arguing, saying that we were better off when we worship these strange gods. While neglecting the word of Yahweh and going against the person who's bringing the word of Yahweh to us. This is Israel. This ain't some strange group of people. This ain't no Gentiles. This ain't, no, no, no. This you. Go ahead. You know, even in, in uh, verse 19, we see the boldness of the women that they've become comfortable. And why? They said, man, we've been doing this with the men. Right. Our so, husbands have been right here with uh -huh. us. We didn't sneak and do this. We didn't sneak and do no evil at night. Y'all were standing right there when we did it. As a matter of fact, who gave me the money to buy the incense? Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Go ahead. Verse 20. Then Yermiah said on to all the people, to the men and to the women, and to all the people which had given him that answer, saying, The incense that you burn in the cities of Yehuda and in the streets of Jerusalem, you and your fathers, your kings and your princes, and the people of the land, did not Yahweh remember them, and came it not into his mind? Mm-hmm so that Yahweh could no longer bear because of the evil of your doings and because of the abominations which you have committed. Mm -hmm. Therefore is your land a desolation and an astonishment and a curse without an inhabitant as at this day. Because you have burnt incense and because you have sinned against Yahweh and have not obeyed the voice of Yahweh, nor walked in his law, nor in his statutes, nor in his testimonies, therefore this evil has happened unto you as at this day. Right. So they believe they have received good because uh, um, they were worshiping those gods, and it was just Yahweh pausing. He said, no, it's that very thing that you are receiving the punishment for. But Yahweh, Yahweh's uh, uh, order of time and our order of time has nothing to do with one another. See, he's not going to run out of time. We're going to run out of time. He ain't never going to run out of time. So in that pause, where we think that Yahweh, Yahweh seen me do it, he must be okay with it. You know, because he ain't strike me down yet. You know, so he must be cool. He's just pausing. Go ahead. Verse 24. Moreover, Yermiah said unto all the people and to all the women, Hear the word of Yahweh, all Yehuda that are in the land of Egypt. Thus said the Yahweh of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, saying, You and your wives have both spoken with your mouths and fulfilled with your hand, saying, We will surely perform our vows that we have vowed to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven 
and to pour out drink offerings onto her, you will surely accomplish your vows and surely perform your vows. Therefore hear you the word of Yahweh, all Yehuda that dwell in the land of Egypt. Behold, I have sworn by my great name, says Yahweh, that my name shall no more be named in the mouth of any man of Yehuda in all the land of Egypt, saying, The Adonai Yah lives. Now, consider this. Um, I have sworn by my great name, says Yahweh, that my name shall no more be named in the mouth of any man of Yehuda in all the land of Egypt, saying, Yahweh I Elohim lives. So part of the punishment is he gives them up to that thing and takes his name out of their mouth. So then you have these people that are out there talking about uh, uh, Hashem and his name is too holy to say. What they don't understand is Yahweh has taken his name from out of their mouth. Say, you don't deserve to, to, to say my name. Give me that. You say some other mess. So they've been given some mess, and then they think they're so, so wise with this mess, and they don't understand that Yahweh just took his name out of your mouth. Don't say my name. It's too holy for you. They said, well, his name is too holy to say. It is for you. We servants of Yahweh, our Elohim. We're supposed to publish his name. His name is too holy for you, not for us. We're supposed to call on his name. See, when his name is too holy for you, you in some mess. Because he don't want you. How many times you done got to the point? And see, let me show you how much we are like our Elohim. How many times you done got mad at somebody and said, let me tell you something. I let my name come out your mouth one more time. How many times you done said that? Come on, now, as, as a people. We done got to that point where you like, let my name come out your mouth one more time. I swear, boy, we about to, we about to get into it. Yahweh did the same thing. Don't let my name come out your mouth no more. And they don't even understand that it's punishment. They out trying to teach other people. Don't say his name. <laughs> nah, that was for you. That wasn't for her. Go ahead. Verse 27. Behold, I will watch over them for evil and not for good. And all the men of Yehuda that are in the land of Egypt shall be consumed by the sword and by the famine until there be an end of them. Yet a small number that escape the sword shall return out of the land of Egypt into the land of Yehuda. And all the remnant of Yehuda that are gone into the land of Egypt to sojourn there shall know whose words shall stand, mine or theirs. Right. Whose words shall stand, mine or theirs. But do understand, they're not hearing Yahweh talk. They're hearing the servant of Yahweh talk. So it's always then a question of whether or not these words are really Yahweh's. Go ahead. And this shall be a sign unto you says Yahweh, that I will punish you in this place, that you may know that my words shall surely stand against you for evil. Thus said Yahweh, Behold, I will give Pharaoh Ophrah, king of Egypt, into the hand of his enemies, and into the hand of them that seek his life, as I gave Zedekiah, king of Yehuda, into the hand of Nebuchadrezzar, king of Babylon, his enemy, and that sought his life. All right, go to... um. Um, that next graphic, bro. <clears throat> Shortly after the surrender of Savannah, Georgia, to Major General W.T. Sherman of the Union Army, the American Missionary Association, whose central office was in New York, launched educational efforts for African Americans in this area. It funded the Beach Institute in 1867 in honor of Alfred E. Beach, Esquire, editor of Scientific America. Beach gave the funds for purchasing the site for the school. Mm -hmm. First Congregational Church was organized in the Beach Institute building on the first Sunday in April 1869 under the guidance and ministry of Reverend Robert L. Carter, a white congregational minister who was stationed in Macon, Georgia. The congregation was made up of mostly students, parents, and teachers of Beach Institute. Now, we have to understand what was uh, uh, going on and what then helped produce this assimilation um, at this point, there then needed to be an education uh, for uh, these people. And then uh, uh, if you can control the education and you can control the direction in which uh, 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 those people are going to uh, 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 take. So it was uh, uh, interesting in 
how all of this was put together. If you look at it, you then find a school and then a church was then built out of the school. So then you have the education on a secular level and then the same people directing education on a spiritual level. And then these people, as they become successful, it's going to bring more people to want to find out, okay, what did y'all do? Because understand, this is something that's happening in Savannah, but the people in control of it was from New York, way away from, from, from here. So they are then trying to direct their uh, 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 education. Go ahead to the next one. A historic Savannah tour guide operator stated that this was the beginning of our assimilation. Mm -hmm. This was a school that turned into a church, which, which later was given funds for college tuition to educate more of its people. Before this, we were self-taught and generated our own wealth. After this, we abandoned that way of life for what we mostly do today, which is to go to school to get a job. Because ex slaves worked and purchased land, we eventually owned millions of acres of land. It was stated to the historic tour group that over 80% of that land has been lost due to theft, sale, or the desire to assimilate into mainstream American life. Uh, let's go to Exodus chapter 5. You know, as we were going on uh, uh, the tour, <clears throat> the guy was showing us some of the land that was basically. Um, um, uh, what was said to be projects. This same thing has happened in almost every city in America. Now, the same houses that ex-slaves used to own. Them slaves, th th those houses going for like four and five million dollars. He showed us a nine million dollar house. Slaves had that, but what did we do? Get up and leave so we can go somewhere else. Left every last bit of it so we can go assimilate somewhere else leaving prime real estate. Same thing happened in Atlanta, same thing happened in every major city. Just go to those areas and you're gonna find what used to be the hood is now the richest part of town. And we left it. So when people talk about, well, you know, we didn't have any wealth, all we had to do is stay put. All those people moved out of their houses, he didn't. Now, he's sitting on a very nice piece of real estate, but he didn't do nothing. All he did was stay put. I had a guy, um, I was working in his house, and he had a really nice house. And the guy was saying, man, you make more money than me. I said, man, you need to stop playing these games. A white dude, he got long hair. He, 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 you can tell he's a beach bum. You know, he's just looking for some water to go take a surfboard. I was like, uh, no, nah, bro, I don't make the kind of money you make. He got hundred some thousand dollar car sitting there, and he just, he ain't working. He ain't doing nothing. He just saying, you make more money than me. So he said, I made one decision when I was young and it turned out to be a good decision. He said, I bought a shack in Hawaii because I was a beach bum. He said, well, brother, ain't no more land in Hawaii. So what you think will happen to the property value? I just held it. And that little shack ended up, when I sold it, I had enough money to buy this mansion, this car, and now he said, my woman make more money than me. Don't matter, I'm still the man. <laughs> I said, why are you talking? On? He sold a shack and bought a mansion and a hundred thousand dollar Porsche. And watch cartoons all day. <laughs> From the sale of this shack. All he did was hold on to it. As we're driving through all of these city streets, we owned all of that. And all of that stuff is uh, 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 now gone. Um, Exodus chapter 5, and let's um, um, start that at verse 1. And afterward, Moshe and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus said Yahweh Elohim of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is Yahweh, that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not Yahweh. Neither will I let Israel go. And this is what we say, whether we know that this is what we're saying, um, when we go to tell people about Yahweh's holy days and people say, well, I ain't got to do that. Right. What they're saying in their own mind is, who is Yahweh? 
I know not Yahweh. I'm not going to keep this. I'm going to keep Christmas. Go ahead. And they said, the El of the Hebrews have met with us. Let us go. We pray you three days journey into the desert and sacrifice unto Yahweh Elohim, lest he fall upon least he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. And the king of Egypt said unto them, Wherefore do you, Moshe and Aaron, let the people from their works get you on to your burdens? And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land now are many, and you make them rest from their burdens. And Pharaoh commanded the same day that the taskmasters of the people and their officers, saying, You shall no more give the people straw to make brick, as heretofore, let them go and gather straw for themselves. And the tale of the bricks which they did make heretofore, you shall lay upon them. You shall not diminish aught thereof, for they be idle. Therefore they cry, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our Elohim. Let their more, let their more work be laid upon the men, that they may labor therein, and let them not regard vain words. And the taskmasters of the people went out, and their officers, and they spake to the people, saying, Thus said Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Go you, get your straw where you can find it, yet not out of your work shall be diminished. So the people were scattered abroad throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble instead of straw. And the taskmasters hasted them, saying, Fulfill your works, your daily task, as when there was straw. And the officers of the children of Israel, which Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them, were beaten and demanded, Wherefore have you not fulfilled your task in making brick both yesterday and today, as heretofore? Then the officers of the children of Israel came and cried unto Pharaoh, saying, Wherefore dealeth you thus with your servants? There is no straw given unto your servants. And they say to us, Make brick, and behold, your servants are beaten. But the fault is in your own people. But he said, You're idle, you're idle. Therefore you say, let us go and do sacrifice to Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Go therefore now and work, for there shall no straw be given you, yet shall you deliver the tale of bricks. Right. I uh, will not give you the stuff to make it, but uh, I still demand that you uh, meet your quota. Now, brother, read uh, uh, the things on this next graphic. Straw. The straw was mixed with clay in order to make the bricks. Now, this is a, a uh, one of the notes from uh, uh, the mm. study Bible. And I want you to hear what uh, uh, um, they have come up with. Go ahead. This is expressly affirmed by Philo, who was himself a native of, of Alexandria in Egypt. He says, describing the oppression of the Israelites, that some were obliged to work in clay and others to gather straw for the formation of bricks, because straw is the binding of the brick. Philo's account is confirmed by Dr. Shaw who says that some of the Egyptian pyramids are made of brick, the composition whereof is only a mixture of clay, mud, and straw, slightly bended and kneaded together, and afterwards baked in the sun. The straw, which keeps the bricks together and still preserves its original color, seems to be a proof that these bricks were never burnt or made in kilns. The same materials are now used for building in Egypt. Mr. Ger Bumgarten says the houses are for the most part of bricks that are only hardened by the heat of the sun and mixed with straw to make them firm. Now, um, um, read the next part about what uh, 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 was stated to us about Savannah. It was stated by a historic Savannah tour guide that slaves used gray clay that came from the Savannah River to make brick to build their own churches by hand. It was also stated that the architectural experts can't find a way to duplicate the bricks to this day. So the old architecture, which is slave architecture, had better bricks than the million dollar homes that are going up in Savannah today. If you can find an original brick from that time, it is valued at $50 per brick. $50 for one brick. And when you go back, the very same things that our people were doing then is the same thing they were doing in Egypt, making the brick. 
and and a, 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 a lot of times, you know, we have this thing where we have, you know, decided what what is a man's job, what is a woman's job. Understand, those men could not keep leaving, going uh, uh, back and forth. So the women had to bring those materials and walk up a pretty steep hill, bringing all of those things for those uh, men to make those bricks, to build those churches. And they did these things after they had already fulfilled all the labor that they had that day. So they would do their work for the, the plantation. Then when they got off, they went back to continue to work to build their own churches by hand. So they're working constantly. They're working when they got off. And that very thing of using those things to put together to uh, uh, make those uh, uh, bricks is the very same thing you find that our people had uh, 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 done before. And I want to read the things on this next graphic. Now, this thing is not in Savannah, but I want you to hear um, and read what this plaque says. Go ahead. Free blacks of Israel Hill, Virginia. Just to the west lies Israel Hill, settled in 1810 through 1811 by approximately 90 formerly enslaved persons who received freedom and 350 acres from Judith Randolph under the will of her husband, Richard Randolph, cousin of Thomas Jefferson. These Israelites... I'm sorry, I said that again? These Israelites... Who they were? Israelites. Okay, so this is on the plaque that's sitting there for anybody to read. Go ahead. And other free African Americans worked as farmers. Right. Now you see how they separate the, uh, uh, these Israelites hmm. and other free African Americans. Remember, uh, uh, when you talk about uh, Amistad, that dude said, look, I'm African. And because he was able to prove he was African, they had to let him go. Go ahead. Craftspeople and Appomattox river boatmen, some labored alongside whites for equal, equal, wages. equal wages and defended their rights in court. This family of early settler, Hercules White, bought and sold real estate in Farmville and joined with white citizens to found the town's first Baptist church in 1836. Israel Hill remained a vigorous black community into the 20th century. Right. So we have to consider that um, that this was called Israel Hill and it was our town. See, there are people who know exactly who you are. But it's not their job to tell you who, 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 who you are, and especially when they don't know if you're going to come out of a bag on them. Imagine a Gentile saying, you know, you, know, you really are the true children of Israel. You calling me a Jew? You calling me a Jew? They don't know how you go at. So they're like, nah, I'm going to let you figure that out and you come and talk to me. And then, you know, when you are right with it, we can talk about it. But I can't talk about it until you get your mind right. Go to this um, um, next graphic. Um, this one thing that they have here is uh, uh, <laughs> this was in the first uh, uh, African Baptist church. Um, <laughs> the Shemitic carvings on the uh, original handmade pews. Uh, of that church. They are now having those things um, examined because they believe it to be Aramaic or Hebrew writing that they carved as they are making these things by hand that these slaves were carving Hebrew writing in the side of the pews. And those things are still there. Now, what's interesting is they know a lot of this stuff, but they're very careful in how they're dealing with it because they still got that theology that's making them money on Sunday morning. So it's, it's very, very interesting in, in how they're going to uh, 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 approach that. But enough people have seen it and enough people have actually said it and pushed it out on the Internet that it's forcing them to go and try to research what that writing is that's on the side of those things. Eventually, they had to move some of them because 
Um, you know, people were sitting in them and people were doing their own things with them, and somebody ended up telling them, you know, this stuff is uh, 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 this original wood. This 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 about like ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars a pew here. So needless to say, they took them and moved them after that because they realized that those things were worth money, and people kept, you know, messing with them. You know, people just stick gum on the stuff. You know, people don't care about stuff. They don't really know what they had. So they just kept some of those out, but some of the other ones they put in storage to be preserved. Uh, let's go to Nehemiah chapter 5. Nehemiah chapter 5, and let's read verses 1 through 13. And there was a great cry of the people and of their wives against their brethren, the Yehudis. For there were heard that said, We, our sons and our daughters, are many. Therefore we take up corn for them, that we may eat and live. Some also that, some also, some also there were that said, We have mortgaged our lands, vineyards, and houses, that we might buy corn because of the dirt. Right. And you find the original part of this mortgaging then ended up coming into play in Egypt when there was this great famine and the people had ran out of money, the money failed, everything that they had done had uh, uh, gone down, um, then the lands were then mortgaged to Pharaoh. So then after that, this is when this percentage, this uh, 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 taxing percentage was then instituted. So you find this mortgage thing was to, to basically use their houses as a, a, a way to feed themselves so they no longer fully own their own houses. And it's funny because we were just talking about this uh, 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 the other day where, you know, people say, you know, there's pride and ownership. And it's like, you know, until you made the last payment, you don't own the house. You know, and we, we, we walk around, you know, yeah, we get some tax benefits from, from, from having a house. But at the end of the day, the mortgage company owned the house. See, because if you don't make them payments on time, they're coming to get that house. Go ahead. Verse 4, there were also that said, we have borrowed money for the king's tribute, and that upon our lands and vineyards. Yet now our flesh is as the flesh of our brethren, our children as their children. And, lo, we bring into bondage our sons and our daughters to be servants, and some of our daughters are brought onto bondage already. Neither is it in our power to redeem them, nor other men, have, for other men have our lands and vineyards. Right, it says we, we have borrowed money for the king's tribute. So they're borrowing money to pay taxes. Go ahead. You know, in this situation here, it comes to mind, says we bring our sons and daughters into bondage. We know about this whole credit thing. Mm -hmm. And our credit will go bad. And you go use the kids' criteria. Right, right. <laughs> La June Bug got all kinds of stuff in his name. He don't know it. He hood rich. He, he, don't, he has no idea that his credit is towed down. It ain't towed up. It's towed down before he ever even get to even try to get something. But that's the system. Go ahead. And I was very angry when I heard their cry and these words. Then I consulted with myself and I rebuked the nobles and the rulers, and said unto them, You exact interest, every one of his brother? And I set a great assembly against them. And I said unto them, We, after our ability, have redeemed our brethren, the Yehudis, which were sold unto the heathen. And will you even sell your brethren? Or shall they be sold unto us? Then held they their peace, and found no, nothing to answer. Right, because it was a certain way that we were supposed to uh, operate uh, with uh, uh, one another. When you look at that graphic, you see that uh, red door as we moved around Savannah and we start seeing these red doors. These red doors uh, symbolize that these uh, buildings were paid off, that they had no mortgage. Uh, so uh, 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 it was a big point when you got to that point of completely paying your property off. Go ahead. Also, I said, it is not good that you do. Ought you not to walk in the fear of our Elohim because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies? 
I likewise and my brethren and my servants might exact of them money and corn. I pray you, let us leave off this interest. Restore, I pray you, to them, even this day, their lands, their vineyards, their olive yards, and their houses, also the hundredth part of the money, and of the corn, the wine, and the oil, that you exact of them. Mm -hmm. Then said they, We will restore them, and will require nothing of them, so will we do as you saith. Then I called the priest, and took an oath of them, that they should do accord to this promise. Also I took my lap, also I shook my lap, and said, So Elohim shake out every man from his house, and from his labor, that performeth not this promise. Even thus be he shaken out, and emptied. And all the congregation said, Amen, and praised Yahweh. And the people did according to this promise. Right, and one thing you find out as you start going through uh, uh, some of these things and dealing with Israel, sometimes we know what right is, but there still has to be somebody that's going to inconvenience themselves to make sure that the right is performed. And this was uh, 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 the duty of the, 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 the leaders, the kings and the priests, uh, the judges, it was upon them to inconvenience themselves to make sure that that order w was followed. Because once they push at this, saying, why are you doing this? They're doing this because they see everybody else. You know, this is the way that they operate. And they said, wait a minute, man, we don't loan to each other on interest. Why are you doing this? Once it, it then gets pushed, then they all go back. All right, we ain't going to do that no more. Well, he, they already knew it. He didn't have to explain to them what was to be done. But sometimes we have to make one another uh, 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 do right. And that's something that we have to remember amongst each other. Each one of us may get weak in an area. This is what we need one another for. And sometimes you're going to have to help one another. Brother, why are you doing that? Bro, put that down. Bro, bro that ain't yours. I, I, I can see where you're holding it. You're about to steal it. Put that down, bro. You can see theft in a man's eyes. You can look at it because he's looking at it wrong. Bro, that ain't your stuff. Put that down, man. Sometimes you got to help one another. They already knew what was right. Let's go to uh, Luke chapter 21. And don't be so proud as to think one, you know, that you ain't never going to need no help. I've been in a situation where I had to call a brother. Look here, man. I'm about to go in this place. And I don't trust myself. I'm going to need you to call me. And, and, and let me tell you something about me. When you call me, I'm going to tell you I'm all right. Don't believe me. Keep calling me till I get the hell out of there. And I did exactly what I told him. See, this is something about knowing yourself. See, so a lot of people don't know they self. So when the brother called me, and I told the brother to call me, because I know I was in a situation that I might like. <laughs> so uh, when the brother called me, I said, no, nah, I'm straight. He like, bro, I don't believe you. And he did what I asked him to do. He kept calling me till I left. I had to thank that brother. Thank you, bro, because I, I, I wasn't doing too good. I know I told you one thing on that phone, man, but that was me lying to myself. I appreciate it. But you got to know yourself good enough to know. When it get to this point, I'm going to lie to me. Lying to somebody else is one thing. Lying to something to yourself is something altogether different. But you need to know you. Uh, go ahead, bro. Luke uh, uh, 21. 21 verse 20. Yeah. And when you shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is near. Mm -hmm. Then let them which are in Yehuda flee to the mountains. Now, consider this. The, the subtitle of, his, of this says, The Destruction of Jerusalem Foretold. Now, um, um, there are several things here. Uh, verse 20, And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is near. And a lot of people are dealing with this, thinking that they're dealing with when... Uh, all the armies come up to Jerusalem. What they don't understand is this part has already happened in 70 AD. That's what we read about before, that Titus came in and basically destroyed Jerusalem down to the bedrock. So there are people that are 
going to Israel and then they're dealing with this part as their salvation on what to do. So keep reading. Then let, the, let, then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountain, mm -hmm. and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein to. Mm -hmm. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. These things, now he's talking about um, Israel not entering in. Why would you not enter in if the judgment is on the other nations? See? So... Uh, these be the days of vengeance that all things are written may be fulfilled. Go ahead. But woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. Mm -hmm. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. Pause. They will be led away captive into all nations. We already been, that's already happened. Okay, so understand where we are in this verse, because you got people that believe that them going back up to Jerusalem now is the place where they going to be. And they keep saying, well, we know that, you know, when the destruction happened, we're going to flee in the mountains. Uh, but Israel going to be in the wilderness being separated and sanctified for three and a half years. What the hell are you going to do in the mountains? See? Go ahead. Sometimes we're so smart, we're stupid. Go, uh, go ahead. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. That's happening now. Who you think them people are over there calling themselves the Jews? Those are proselytes mixed in with Edomites. Those are Europeans. It's being trodden down of the Gentiles right now. For them to believe that they're going to go up into the mountains, that's to believe that we're going to be shipped into all nations as captives again. So we're going to go back only to get sent back? Keep reading. Until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Okay. So Jerusalem then is supposed to be trotting down of the Gentiles until the Gentile rule is over. See, there's certain things that we're not considering. So all the people, just like our people were talking about, let's go back to Liberia. Let's go to these places. Yahshua was saying the same thing that Yahweh was saying. This stuff is not going to be over until their rule comes to an end. So as long as the, 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 their rule is there, then they're going to rule in Israel. So you go back, you're just a tourist. And you may get caught up into some other things. But that's the first thing we want to do. Go ahead. Verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. So understand that there are a, 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 uh, uh, there's a big space in between a few of these verses. Uh, verse 20, and when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, understand, that happened in 70 AD, that's just 70 years from uh, 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 when the Messiah said this, okay? So he's giving them this near part of the prophecy. That's where verse 20 is. Then you have verse 24 where the children of Israel, and we read the note that was in the study Bible about them being shipped all over the place. Okay, that's 24. Now in verse 25, do you understand? Now we're talking about the return of Yahshua. Now we're talking about 2,000 years later. And sometimes we just read and we just go from line to line and not understand. It's about 2,000 years in between verse 24 and verse 25. Over 2,000 years. But we just keep reading. Because, you know, we got that little thing where it says, you know, to read the Bible in a year, you need to read these many verses per day. So I'm going to read this whole Bible. Yes, I am. So I'm going to go through everything. But you don't understand a damn thing. But you don't go through everything because you're just running through it. And we just are flying. It's 2,000 plus years in between verse 24 and verse 25. But if you're flying through it, you don't get that. Go ahead, man. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Right, because these things ain't even happened yet. 
the moon and the sun are, 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 are changing its state when the Messiah comes back? That has not happened. But we got spread off into countries in 70 AD. Go ahead. And then they shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and uh -huh. great glory. Uh -huh. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look and lift up your heads, for your redemption draws near. Then know that your redemption draws near. So there's some things that we have to then uh, 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 consider. Uh, go to uh, the next graphic. In an article from the Black Chronicle newspaper entitled, the Klan for the Old Glory, dated March 30th, 1870. The Ku Klux Klan was formed in 1865 in Pulaski, Tennessee. Now, what I find interesting is they always drop Christian knights off. See, it's amazing. Anytime somebody does something that they, you know, don't like and they're part of a group, they try to throw everybody in that group under the bus. They don't like to admit that the Ku Klux Klan are Christians. Hmm. Okay, they burnt crosses. They got crosses on their uniform. Mm -hmm. They were the Christian knights of the Ku Klux Klan. They like to leave off the Christian knight part. Hmm. But I tell them, no, 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 I want you to capitalize that part. Put that in all caps. Because they'll tell you about how bad the jihadist is and the things that they've done. The Christians have done even more wicked and evil things. Bombing churches, killing little girls, decapitating people, and then turn around and go right to church. Go ahead. Its leader, General Nathan Bedford Forrest, rebel chief at the Fort Pillow Massacre, its vile object to accomplish by terror and murder the permanent sub subjugation of black men and women throughout the South. The Ku Klux Klan organization is one of many Southern night riding groups. Southern night riding groups. So they, they, they operated in terror by riding during the nighttime to do all kind of wickedness. So when you read in Deuteronomy and it says there's a point where you say uh, uh, at night, I would to Elohim it was daytime for the fear of the night. Then at the daytime, you wish that it was night because of the fear of the day. At, the, at, at nighttime? They all sitting there wondering if a bunch of people in sheets about to show up. Go ahead. Others include the Knights of the White Camellia, Pale Faces, Red Jackets, and the Constitutional Guards. Their purpose, so they say, is to bring back the glory of the Old South. All right, so consider that. The Old South and they're gonna bring back the glory. Go ahead. Last May, Elias Hill, a black Baptist preacher in New York, New York County, South Carolina, was beaten almost to death by a Klan mob. Now this is, uh, when it says last May, of course, this is from the original part in the, in the Chronicles newspaper. Go ahead. Reverend Hill was not killed because he agreed to sign an oath in the papers denouncing the Republican Party. See, what our people don't really remember is that it was the Republican Party that was going to give uh, our people uh, certain rights and certain things. The Democrats wasn't doing anything. Democratic Party wasn't doing anything. So uh, all of that has kind of switched around uh, uh, nowadays, but you know, people don't really remember that. So there's certain things that we have to uh, 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 consider. Um, we must first understand that when the president's presidential candidates say make America great again, they are actually borrowing from an old Ku Klux Klan thing to bring back the glory of the Old South. That's why people kept saying, well, why, why, why it seem like so many rednecks just agree with that? That's an old Ku Klux Klan term. When they say, make America great again, the redneck automatically heard, glory to Old South. God bless America, new place. Else. They automatically heard that. It just automatically clicked in there because that was their thing. These are the things that they went around with. So when you said make America great again, they automatically went into old glory mode. We know what that means. Just like we had things of the Underground Railroad where we talked right amongst other people, well, they do the same thing amongst us. They got certain things that they can talk right amongst each other and talk about that uh, our old glory. But we have to remember, 
All of this is possible or happening because we didn't obey Yahweh. See, what we like to do is we want to blame people. Well, these people did this. These people wouldn't have had absolutely no power to do anything to you had you done what you were supposed to do. That's something that we uh, 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 don't deal with. Now, we often hear of uh, so-called crimes where a black man did something wrong and was hung for it. According to Johnny Brown, operator of Freedom Tours in historic Savannah, Georgia, there are still standing uh, known whipping trees and known hanging trees in Savannah, Georgia. What we were surprised to hear is that most of the people that were hanged were either property owners or people who attempted to vote. Um, there was also, we have to uh, uh, take into account this separation of families at the border. We have to consider that America has not changed. Black families were split up when we got here and we didn't ask to come, nor did we come on our own. Also, we were split up at the same place that these Mexicans are split up at the border of every town we landed in. According to the Smithsonian.com, when we consider the legacy of the Declaration and its authors, Thomas Jefferson, we confront uh, and debate this compelling paradox that the man who trumpeted the self-evident truth that all men are created equal owned some 175 slaves. Um, read that uh, from um, um, the next graphic, brother. All men are created equal and the land of the free. Both those mottos sprang from the pens of men with quite narrow views of equality and freedom. The seeming contradictions between Jefferson's slaveholding history, deeply racist personal views, his support of the institution in his political life, and his assert, assert, assertion of human rights in the Declaration, in many ways parallel Key's story. Mm -hmm. Star Spangled Banner. In 1814, Francis Scott Key was a slaveholding lawyer. Stop. Read that again. In 1814, Francis Scott Key was a slaveholding lawyer. This is the man who wrote the Star Spangled Banner. He was a slaveholding lawyer. So understand the, 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 the very song that people are saying we need to sing, and if you don't sing it, you must be some kind of anti-patriot. You must be anti-American. Do understand that you are singing the song that was really a poem written by an ex-slave holder. Go ahead. In 1814, Francis Scott Key was a slaveholding lawyer from an old Maryland plantation family mm -hmm. who, thanks to a system of human bondage, had grown rich and powerful. Uh huh. When he wrote the poem that would, in 1931, become the national anthem and proclaim our nation the land of the free. Now, this is coming from the Smithsonian.com. Understand? All right, go ahead. Like Jefferson, he not only profited from slaves, he harbored racist conceptions of American citizenship and human potential. Africans in America, he said, were a distinct and inferior race of people, which all experience proves to be the greatest evil that afflicts a, a community. Right, now this is the song that they want you to stand up and, 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 and sing, and this is the thought process of the individual who wrote the song. Go ahead. Francis Scott Key writes in the third stanza of the Star Spangled Banner. And this is the part that you're not uh, uh, allowed to hear because it stops. They just basically go over, I think, the first stanza. So uh, uh, you don't hear the stuff that's in the second and third. Go ahead. No refuge could save the hireling and slave. This the is the same part of the Star Spangled Banner. All right? This is what it says later on in the poem. Go ahead. No refuge could save the hireling and slave mm -hmm. from the terror of flight or the gloom of the grave. Right. This is, this is what he wrote about you know, the black people, and this is the one that they want you to stand up, put your hand over your heart, and sing. Go ahead. And the Star Spangled Banner in triumph does wave, or the land of the free and the home of the brave. Right. And then now, um, people are, 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 are made to sing this song about their demise and destruction, because what would end up happening, um, if the slaves joined the British, 
they had a better chance of survival. So he wrote against the slaves being, uh, 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 even having the opportunity to go and fight for the other side and gain freedom. So then that is what those things uh, of what he was writing, that, those are the things that he's talking about. But you see how perception is that anybody who does not stand for this Star Spangled Banner, now they proclaim you to be this, this anti-American, but they don't know what's in that third stanza. And most of our people don't either. We don't know nothing about it. And then you got us going to the games, and this is a, 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 a good opportunity for us to go and perform in front of all America. So we go and sling a, a sing the slave song. And we think we're doing something too. And we 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 blacking that thing up too when we sing it. Oh, we black. Oh, say, can you see? Man, come on, man. The damn song gonna take out. I really don't want to hear it. Let's uh, go to Joel chapter 3. Uh, 9.32. All right. But I tell people, be careful where you're at, though. Because you go to one of them ball games and you don't stand up for that national, uh, uh, that little national anthem, you, hey, you, 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 you might have a hard time getting out of there. You might have a hard time getting out of that. You might want to consider where you are when that goes down. Joel chapter 3 and verse 1, and let us hear the conclusion of this matter. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Yehuda and Jerusalem. That means cause the captivity to cease. I'm going to bring again the captivity of Yehuda and Jerusalem. And we already read the city of Israel is going to be trotting down to the Gentiles the whole ruling time of the Gentiles. So for somebody to tell you that true Israel has come home, don't fit the book. But if you don't know that, somebody else is going to give you a little self-esteem about your heritage and about who you are. Go ahead. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Okay, now, this is the one that the people are getting mixed up in uh, what we read in Luke. See? They are taking that out of context, not understanding that the one that's written, that this is how, if, if, if you haven't been taught how to study, it gets confusing. Because the one in the Old Testament hasn't happened. The one in the New Testament has. Man, you got you to gotta see the confusion in that if you ain't been taught how to read it that automatically people are thinking the Old Testament is the old stuff. This has not happened. This is talking about Armageddon. That's why you got people reading the New Testament saying, well, we just gonna run up to the mountains. No, brother, that done already happened. You ain't running up to no mountains. That happened in 70 AD. But you see how confusing that is? If people don't give you a certain timeline, this is this is my problem uh, 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 when you got a study Bible, it helps you follow along with that. This is what I'm talking about. So you can read something in the New Testament thinking that this is a closer event, but the event in the New Testament already happened. This one in the Old Testament has not. Grasp that. Go ahead. And I'll plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. So understand, at this part of the world, we are already scattered. In the New Testament, Yahshua was saying, they will scatter you. Here in the Old Testament, it's already talking about the punishment for you already being scattered. Go ahead. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. And we know that we were sold for mere trinkets. Go ahead. Yea, and what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coast of Palestine? Right. Who had Canaan land before? The people who we call Africans. And what do our people do? 
try to go away from the punishment of Israel and go back to Africa. Go ahead. Will you render me a recompense? And if you recompense me, swiftly and speedily will I return your recompense upon your own head. Because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. Mm -hmm. The children also of Yehuda and the children of Jerusalem have you sold to the Grecians that you might remove them far from their border. Right. So, and these were so-called Africans that sold us. Um, before, there was a sub-Saharan uh, uh, slave trade, uh, but then those people realized, well, hey, we, we can bypass the Arabs and go and get these people uh, uh, directly from, from, from other Africans. Go ahead. Behold, I'll raise them out of the place where you have sold them, and will return your recompense upon your own head. Right. So then now Yahweh is dealing with the people who sold us. A lot of times people look at this and they think, okay, Yahweh is talking about he's going to, you know, deal with the Euro Gentiles. No, he's talking about African. No, oh, then the people that sold us. The Euro Gentiles ain't going to steal nobody. That's where they got them shipping manifest, those receipts. Go ahead. And I'll sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Yehuda, and they shall sell them to the Sabaeans, to a people far off, for Yahweh hath spoken it. Proclaim you this among the Gentiles. Prepare war, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. Mm -hmm. Beat your plowshares into swords, and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. And when people, you know, read this, a lot of times they're like, okay, you know, a bunch of farmers beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. I mean, you're going you're gonna to turn into an army like that? Um, there's this little group called Al-Qaeda. Um, I don't know if y'all know that, but they was, a bunch of, um, they was a bunch of farmers. And then um, the people went in there, they called CIA. They went in there and because Russia was fighting them, the CIA got into the fight and they wanted to, to curb whatever Russia was going to do. So in the process of America and Russia, because Russia went into like Afghanistan first and got tore up. It was, Afghanistan was uh, 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 Russia's, uh, what that place we went, Vietnam, where we got tore up? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Afghanistan was their Vietnam. Okay, so in the process, America is paying, you know, some rebel groups who was basically farmers and things like that. Uh, yeah, that grew into Al Qaeda. So all the problems that they said they are having now with Bin Laden and all of that, yeah, they taught them that. Right, but those were farmers. And to this day, they're having a problem with them people. Right. So don't let that thing fool you right there. Go ahead. Verse 11. Assemble yourselves and come, all you heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. They're the cause your mighty ones to come down. O Yahweh, let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Mm -hmm. Put you in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full, the fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of Yahweh is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Right. So now we can then go back and relate this back to the things that are written in the New Testament later on in uh, uh, that chapter that we read, where it then starts talking about the sun turning dark. Now it's talking about of the coming of the Messiah and the redemption of the children of Israel. So those things before that had already happened. Go ahead. Yahweh also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But Yahweh will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So shall you know that I am Yahweh your Elohim dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain, then shall Jerusalem be holy. Right, and I, I, I cannot go past that part. Then shall Jerusalem be holy. And you always hear people talking about, I'm on my way to the Holy Land. What Holy Land? I'm on my way to Israel. I'm going to the Holy Land. Okay, let me read something to you. 
then shall Jerusalem be holy. Right. When? Um, and there shall no strangers pass through her anymore. Right. She's being trodden down of the Gentiles the whole time of the Gentiles. There are strangers in her land, but people still talking about, I'm on my way to the Holy Land. Now, you're on your way to a land that will be holy. That's what you're on your way to. You, you're on your way to the will be holy land. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, tell me about your trip. I'll let me when you get back. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop down new wine and the hills shall flow with milk and all the rivers of Yehuda shall flow with waters. And a fountain shall come forth out of the house of Yahweh and shall water the valley of Shittim. Egypt shall be a desolation and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness for the violence against the children of Yehuda mm -hmm. because they have shed innocent blood in their land. Right. So Yahweh is going to deal with these people who pretend to be uh, 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 the children of Israel. He's going to deal with that. Go ahead. But Yehuda shall dwell forever and Jerusalem from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed. For Yahweh dwelleth in Zion. For Yahweh dwells in Zion, and as it is written, um, um, his house shall be a house of prayer for all uh, people. All of those who accept uh, uh, Yahweh and accept the children of Israel for who they are. See, what people want to do is deal with Yahweh but they want to bypass the children of Israel. And that's not going to be able to happen. You're going to have to accept things all the way throughout. So Yahweh is going to help the nations uh, when they start to see his power. Uh, uh, then they will be able to accept the children of Israel and know that it was Yahweh that took uh, uh, the protection and the covering uh, uh, from off of us that even allowed us to go through those things and not only will the nations understand it we will understand it because it actually frightens us in this country that we could be the children of israel it actually frightens us that we could be more than what we've been told that we are because with great power also comes great responsibility and what we want is the power without the responsibility but those things go hand in hand you cannot have one without the other that's all that we're going to do for today Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.